better than better than what I've been early in the season. And uh, you know, I agree with you on the passes. I think the passes were bad passes, not bad decisions. Um, I always you know, when I'm looking at a quarterback, it's either is it a bad decision or are you just taking a risk? Because taking a risk doesn't equate to a bad decision. A bad decision, according to my system, is where you make a mental error, where you're not seeing a defender in the passing lane, where there's two defenders, you're covering a receiver, and you're forcing into the coverage anyway, where it's got to be something where it's an actual error. And those passes, I didn't think they were errors. I just thought they were taking risk. And I don't mind seeing Bradford take a risk because early in the season, I don't think he was taking enough of them. There's no doubt about it. I mean, they were really underneath stuff. And, and yesterday, still same thing, a lot of checkdowns yesterday. It seems like that's the NFL. Uh, but overall, is he taking a step? I mean, here's a guy who didn't play since 2013. He's obviously a little rusty, and he's going to make mistakes, and he's going to look rusty. But are you starting to see him take steps in, ter- in the positive direction, meaning is he kind of getting away from the rustiness and the fact that he hasn't played in so long. Are you seeing him take positive steps, or is he still too inconsistent? Uh, I, I see that he's trusting his offensive line a little more than he did early in the year because that was the biggest thing we've been talking about over the last past few weeks. Early in the season, he didn't trust his offensive line, and now I'm thinking that he is. He, he does feel like he can trust his offensive line, and maybe he could trust his receivers more too because we talked earlier that you know he hasn't had a vertical threat and got, you know, hasn't had guys who can really go deep downfield. Yesterday he attempted 17 vertical passes. That's you know that's a pretty high number, uh, and I only completed seven of them for 133 yards. But if, you know, I, and I'd like to I'd like to see a higher. That's only 7.8 yards per attempt. That's not that good in vertical passes. But to say, hey, take it 17 vertical attempts downfield against a team like the Saints that have a vertical pass weakness. To say, hey. Uh, we'll we'll go after this. Uh, we'll go after weakness of this nature. I think that's a very positive sign for our Eagles. Yeah. Now, yesterday you look at a Saints team that that's obviously not a very good defense. So, if 519 yards, they scored every single time in the second half. Am I supposed to feel that this offense has turned the corner, or did they play the Saints? Uh, they played the Saints, but hey, you know, if you if you go up against a weak defense and you're supposed to score and you do score. What? That's a good thing. I mean, if you do what you're supposed to do, I mean, it's it's. I I would be concerned that I don't know that the Eagles play this way at this level against a better defense down the road. Uh, I don't know that they'll be able to, to you know perform at this level. I think some of it does have to do with the Saints. But if you you know if you're putting up 500 yards against the Saints, you're supposed to put 500 yards against the Saints. So I don't look at it as I look at it as the Eagles could have played better. But hey, you put up 500 yards, you can't uh, you can't complain. Yeah, no, and obviously, uh, they. I thought Casey that a lot of things opened up because the offensive line in the run game: 20 carries for 83 yards for Murray, eight carries for 73 yards for Matthews, another five carries for 27 yards for Sproles. And I really thought that helped out, and it showed the difference in that pass game. That Bradford had time; they were using some play action, and, and I think the running game was really the difference for them. Best run blocking they've had all year, forty-three uh, percent good blocking rate. Uh, you know, just you can you can if you keep run blocking like that. And I don't think that was the Saints have been solid against the run all season long. They haven't been uh, they've not been great. They've been bad everywhere on defense, but they've been solid enough to where if you're putting up that type of performance, a nice type of run blocking against them, that's that's a very good sign. It's sort of remember last week they played you know, when they played the Redskins they. They had good blocking, I thought, in the running game early on, and they got away from it. And this game, they said, we're going to stick with the running. We're going to keep going back to it. Even though we're doing our vertical passes, which you should do when you've got, you know, facing a Saints defense it's that week against the pass, there were 29th vertical yards per attempt coming into the game. When yeah, we, If you can continue to run the ball like this the rest of the season, I think it bodes very well for the Eagles. Yeah, it does. And obviously, uh, the Murray-Matthews things will continue to go back and forth. I thought Matthews, you know, still gave them a better, uh, uh, more... Uh, explosive look, and Murray did what he's supposed to do, kind of just grinding him out. Hopefully they can even those two guys out a little bit more, and you might have something there. And It seems that, uh, Casey, this is going to be an offense that keeps evolving, and we keep forgetting that there's a lot of new parts here, a lot of moving parts, and that's not easy to do in the NFL where continuity is so big. No, especially if we were talking up front that uh, when you've got, you know, if you've got the offensive line going through as many personnel changes as it does, you saw it happen in Denver. I mean, Denver's got yeah, they've got great receivers. They have, you know, uh, Manning's not what he used to be, but he's still Peyton Manning, and you've got terrific running backs, and they're not getting anything in on offense because they had to take their retool their offensive line. And, you know, and it's, the Eagles have had some of the same problems. And as you start to get an offensive line to gel, that's when you're going to start to, you know, you start to get what you saw yesterday. And remember, 
uh, Bradford's not sacked yesterday. He took seven hits. I don't like seeing seven hits out of uh, yeah. That's you know, but but it's forty five passes too. So that's still a good percentage on how many times you're getting hit. But no sacks. Yeah, so. they they protected him well in, in the passing game. And look, I I think he he took a step forward in terms of the confidence. But uh, you know, those two interceptions in the end zone, I, I think that's you know he's got three in the end zone this year and. and uh, <laughs> Those decisions, again, I don't think they're bad decisions, just not good throws. You hope that maybe as he continues to gain confidence uh, that he slings it a little better. Yeah, the concern is that is it's not a bad decision, and like we were talking about, it's not a, you know according to the, my system, but you still have to wonder that it was a covered receiver. And did, did you not have somebody open? I, did you, you – know, you, you, you know, and if, you did, if the guy is covered that well, maybe don't throw it there. Maybe do a check there. Maybe do something else, come back to a different play. I mean, there were – there were other options I don't think that, that needed to be forced in, the, in both those cases. And, again, I'm going to be Bradford just trying to uh, to take some chances. And, and maybe we, we were talking last week, too, at a halftime of the Washington game, that the idea might have been that the Eagles look like they told Bradford to start taking more chances. So maybe he's doing that. So now maybe time to say, okay, well, maybe scale back a couple of the chances that you take. Maybe don't take quite as many chances as you took yesterday. Uh, Eagles defense forced four fumbles, uh, three fumbles and an interception. I mean, they continue to do their job. What are you seeing from this defense? Uh, you know, the one thing that I, I guess you can nitpick on is third down conversions. The Saints are still getting third downs yesterday. I mean, there's so many times when the Eagles could get off the field and really dominate that game, but they're just not there yet. Yeah, I like the pass rush. I like the five sacks, but they didn't have any quarterback hits. So it's either they got the sack or they weren't getting the, the breeze at all. And Breeze is a dink and dunk passer right now. He's not. He doesn't have the vertical. You know, he, he he's just he's not a vertical passer. He cannot throw the deep pass like he used to because he used to always be uh, one of the best vertical passers in the league. So you're facing a, a, a limited quarterback. But the Eagles were good against the run yesterday, and finally they they faced a guy who's not very good at throwing vertical passes, and they didn't allow him to do very much in the vertical passing game. And they did get five sacks. So there are you know there are items and elements in defense where it's okay. They, they, there's still some things they didn't do well, but. Again, overall, when you consider the competition level, it's still a good performance. Uh, we're early, but uh, what did you see from the Giants last night? Uh, obviously, they get that win last second. Eli, I think Eli's the difference in the East right now between the four teams there. Uh, but what did you see from the Giants? Uh, I see a team that right now is still the favorite to win the NFC East. Uh, they they are they, they're not perfect, but they're playing well in so many areas. There, they're playing well in special teams. Their running game looked better last night, uh, and Eli is just Eli is. Eli is the top five quarterback right now. I mean, he he can play that well. You worry about uh, Beckham is his uh, his hamstring is that going to be an issue down the road? But I mean, he Eli is that kind of a passer where even if you take Beckham out of the mm-hmm. equation, he still might be able to put up uh, 300 yard games almost every week. Uh, Dallas obviously Whedon big problem there. You think they make the switch to Castle? They have to. The big problem for Whedon is he in the states back to college. He makes tons of bad decisions. I mean, he made a couple of them yesterday. And when you're Dallas's offense. As limited as he is, you can't have him. You can't have a dink and dunk passer who makes bad decisions. If that's the case, you got to go to somebody else who's not going to make bad decisions. Castle historically has not made a lot of bad decisions, so yeah, you got to make the change. All right, uh, Casey Joiner, everybody at Casey Joiner TFS on Twitter he will join me on Thursday with a look at the Eagles and the Giants. Big game there, and uh, obviously that one on Monday night. You can hear it right here on ninety-seven three. Thanks, pal. Appreciate it, man.